This is what a healthy coral reef looks like, a wash in colors and life of all kinds. But two years ago, nearly half of Australia's Great Barrier Reef died after two consecutive summers of unusually warm water. The warm water stressed the coral, and when that happens, they self-destruct by shedding the algae that serves as their food. All of these stresses are amplifying ocean heating, the really rapid heat waves we're experiencing. And that's causing the unique symbiosis between corals and their algal symbionts to deteriorate. Once the algae leave, you're left with a bare white skeleton. And this means the corals can no longer gain the energy they need to survive. That is why these researchers are here at this mangrove island. There are crocodiles here, but there are also some very special corals. So the mangrove lagoons are interesting because they create conditions that are warmer, more acidic and have lower oxygen than the adjacent reefs. And these are the conditions that we are seeing and are predicted to uh, see intensify under climate change. So if we can find corals that survive there and thrive there, we hope to better understand how corals may survive into the future under climate change. After collecting samples from the lagoons, the team is doing experiments to better understand how they can thrive in the hot, acidic lagoon waters, but they are also beginning to transplant these corals to the larger reef systems to make sure they survive a warming world. It's all very well if you can grow corals, but the real challenge then is, is using them to replant onto the reef and increase the ecology. And this is where we're using brand new techniques, um, creating little clips to clip them out as quickly as we can, avoiding the use of plastics or chemicals to attach them. And already we're seeing great success with this particular technique. The team says their goal is to one day begin large-scale transplants of this heat-resistant coral onto the stressed areas of the Great Barrier Reef. Kevin Enix, VOA News.